there's this pre- preach about any religion and all but uh, the concept of rudraksha the shivalinga it, it most it more identifies with the hindu religion mm-hmm. so what is the answer to it <coughs> we need to understand this in proper perspective one thing is the word hindu means anybody who is born in the land of indus or indo is a hindu so it's a geographical identity it's not a religious identity you can believe in god and be a good hindu you can disbelieve in god and still be a good hindu you don't have to ascribe to any particular belief system to be a hindu you can believe whatever you want you can disbelieve everything and still be a hindu because it's a geographical and cultural identity it was never to be organized as a religion only when outside very aggressive religions came in the local people tried to organize themselves into some kind of a religion even today you cannot organize them because they don't have a common belief system if all of them believed in just one god one this thing one that thing you could organize them but it is not so you cannot organize them because it's a multiple belief systems or no belief there are lots of agnostic agnostics right from the ancient times agnostics have always been there in the hindu way of life and they are very much hindus because it's a geographical identity now anything that was discovered and developed in this land naturally grew up branded as hindu why rudraksha and dhyanaling even yoga is ba- branded as hindu in many parts of the world if you can call dhyanalingam or yoga or rudraksha or anything as hindu it's just like saying you know isaac newton he was a jew so gravity is definitely jewish isn't it theory of relativity is definitely jewish it's just like that you saying yoga or dhyana linga anything else is hindu is just like that it's come up in this culture so naturally because it's a dialectical culture everything was expressed in stories not in a plus b equal c that's not the way we made science here because the best way to teach anything to anybody how education can be life enhancing not life suppressing that's how education was given if you look at the shiva purana you will see it's just pure physics the highest dimensions of physics expressed in wonderful story forms today modern education scientists are telling us if a child enters a kindergarten school and goes through 20 years of formal education let's say he comes out with a phd then they say 70% of his intelligence is irrevocably destroyed then you have a knowledgeable idiot so today they are thinking about how to educate children without suppressing their intelligence and some of the most common suggestions that have come forth is either to teach it as a play or as a story all modern education scientists are saying this if education is in the form of a story or a play it will not be suppressive this is what they did 10000 years ago it is just that from generation to generation when it was carried some generations forgot the science carried just the stories and stories got distorted exaggerated lost the relevance but if you look at it carefully you will see the highest dimensions of physics is very beautifully propounded through stories the word shiva means that which is not he is not somebody who is sitting on the mountain shiva means that which is not so it is seen as the basis of everything 
Today modern science has gone a full circle and today modern science tells you everything comes from nothing and goes back to nothing. Yes? That's what Shiva means. That's why we call him the destroyer because he's nothingness. Always every religion has said, God is everywhere, isn't it? What can be everywhere? Can something be any everywhere? Something can be only somewhere, isn't it? Only nothing can be everywhere, isn't it so? So Shiva means nothingness, that which is not. So it's not a person. We have personified it so that you can relate to it. We have created energy forms of him so that you could relate to it and make it more accessible to you. But fundamentally it's a vast emptiness of the space which we are referring to as Shiva. So nothing Hindu about that. <laughs>